Hello everyone, welcome to the module on intermolecular forces and production energy surfaces. We are still discussing about production energy surfaces and in the previous lecture we had looked at the production energy surface of H3 system in some detail. So, in this particular lecture we shall look at some of the salient features of the H3 system or the more generally AB plus C gives uh, A plus BC system. But before we do that, let us just recap our memories on what we had discussed in the previous lecture. In the previous lecture, we had uh, looked at the potential energy surface of a H3 system, how does it look like and we had also seen how does one map the H3 system 3 dimensional surface onto a 2 dimensional contour maps that is the one diagram which you see on the right hand corner. And here we had said that uh, the one could traverse different paths in this particular uh, two dimensional contour and that would uh, tell me about the different trajectories which are possible for the given system, correct. So, just to put in perspective, we had said that one scenario is HA approaches HB H C and only on its close approach this would break out and you would form H A H B plus H C. That is this is this uh, H A H B approach is the one which takes place whereas this H B H C bond remains constant and at almost the equilibrium uh, bond distance between H A H B H C would break out and then you would end up in the product. This is one path we had said and the second one we had told was that these are the two extreme conditions that is in this case the HBHC bond elongates first and HC almost leaves and then the HA comes and bonds that would also give you the HAHB plus HC. And third scenario is what we had said is that both the approach of HA and the leaving of the HC would take place to almost the same extent throughout and that would give rise to this uh, HA, HB and HC right. And we had drawn this as a plot something like this where you would go from here. Okay, so, this was what the scenario 3 would look like and we said that the scenario 3 is the one which would give rise to the product because that take, uh, goes over the saddle point or the transition point which is marked with an asterisk sign here. So, the important point to note is that the at saddle point or let us say if I draw this at this point, what you would have is you would have H A, H B and H C. So, this bond distances are roughly around 1 angstrom here Bo and both are equal and they are roughly about 1 angstrom. And the barrier which one crosses that is I am starting with uh, A here with interacting with an H B then I will go up the hill that is at the saddle point and then I come down and fall into the product that is H A H B. So, the height of this barrier is typically about uh, 10 kcal per mole or 10 uh, kilo calories per mole and what needs to be noted is that uh, this is much lower than the amount of energy needed to break the complete hydrogen bond by complete H 2 bond. And also this uh, H 3 system which is shown here is actually a transient system and it actually does not exist or it or, uh, or one can only identify it by what are called as femtosecond uh, transient spectroscopy. Other than that it is very hard to actually uh, isolate these, uh, these species and look at them experimentally. So, I hope this sort of refreshes your memory back onto the potential energy surfaces 
and also on to the different pathways or the trajectories which one can follow on a two dimensional contour of the H3 system. So, having looked at this, now what we shall go ahead and do is we shall look at a little more uh, salient features of this particular system. And so, for that I have just drawn again shown you the same tra trajectory which we looked at in the previous slide that is I have the HAHB system where I am going from the uh, reactant to the product that is AB uh, going from BC, right. So, what is important here is that for a reactant to go to the product it must have the enough amount of the kinetic energy to go and cross the barrier or the hill, right. So, once it crosses the barrier or once it reaches the uh, saddle point or the transition uh, state region, then it would actually invariably go and fall onto the other side where it would lead to the formation of the product. But for it to go from the reactant side to the transition point, it should have enough of kinetic energy. I hope you all agree with that. If you agree with that, then the kinetic energy can come in different forms. One of the ways is that it can have the molecules can have just the translational uh, uh, energy which is which would also contribute to the kinetic energy or the molecules can actually exist in excited vibrational states which would also be part of the kinetic energy, right. So, I will just write down the uh, two components of it for the general AB system. So, let us say I have a, a a reacting with B C giving A B plus C, this is the general reaction. So, the kinetic energy for the activation for reaction to occur can be divided into two parts, one is the translational energy. of the molecules and the two is the vibrational energy. So, that means it could exist either in the V0 or mu0 or mu1 or mu2 or the excited state so on and so forth, right. So, these are the two primary ways in which the kinetic energy can be subdivided. And here what we said in the first case is that we have a starting material that is BC at equilibrium bond length interacting with A and that would give rise to the product as shown here. So, now let us look at a, a scenario where the kinetic energy is broken down into these two parts. The first one is a scenario in which the ground state of the BC that is uh, if you look at this, this one what you see is that it has you actually see sort of wiggly lines right. The wiggly lines represent that the BC bond is no longer in the ground state of the vibrational energy, it is in the some of the excited state that is either the mu 1, mu 2 or higher excited states. So, then what happens is the it would come in contact with the molecule of A which is approaching it and that would interact and cross this uh, the saddle point and go along this direction and lead to the product. Interestingly, in this case what you observe is that the product which comes out is also in the excited state or will also be in the excited state that is the AB would also be in a vibrationally excited state rather than a ground state. This is because the BA bond which we started with is initially with an excited state and has enough energy to collide with A to give rise to the product right. This is a simpler scenario. So, now let us look at another scenario where what happens is I have the A coming and approaching the BC. Now, all of them are in the vibrational ground state. However, the approaching A does not have enough of uh, tra translational energy. So, in that case it will actually not be able to cross the barrier, it will never come and hit the saddle point. As a result it would actually just sort of keep uh, going back and forth in the reactant region. As a result you will no longer have the product formation in this reaction, right. And the last uh, scenario is 
let us consider the B uh, the B C which is which is this one in the in the vibrationally excited state. However, the collision energy of the vibrationally excited state B C with the A is actually not enough for it to actually cross or go along this saddle point. So, even in that situation it would actually keep doing a back and forth motion in the reactant region as a result one would not observe the formation of the product. So, in by looking at this different cases I hope what we have learnt is that the kinetic energy or the, the kinetic energy for the to for crossing the for crossing the activation barrier can come in two different forms. It can come as a purely translational that is the case number 1 here to the extreme left the it can be purely translational or it could also come in the form of excited state vibrations which could also help in crossing the transition state. So, both of these do contribute uh, to crossing the, uh, the transition state and thus leading to the formation of the products. So, having uh, sort of learnt about the different contributions to the uh, kinetic energy and the role in dictating the formation of the products. Now, let us look at uh, two different kinds of potential energy surfaces uh, and they are namely called as attractive and repulsive potential energy surfaces. So, you must be wondering uh, what is this attractive and repulsive is talking about right. So, let us try and understand what, what does the term attractive and repulsive mean here. So, I hope you remember that this is R B C and this is R A B right and A B is the product and B C is the reactant. So, here what we are looking at is the reactant and this equilibrium bond length this one is the R A B of the product correct. And if you now look at the position of the transition state or the position of the saddle point along this uh, along this two dimensional counter map, what you see is that in this particular case of attractive potential energy surface, you see it lies somewhere here. Whereas, initially when I talked about it was somewhere in this direction in this region, it was exactly at the middle of the both these uh, mean equilibrium distances. However, when you come to the attractive you see that it has shifted slightly towards the right hand side of the x axis. And when you go to the repulsive potential energy surface you will see that it comes to the left of the uh, equilibrium uh, R A B. And the reason for this or the uh, why we call this attractive and repulsive is because if you now look at the, uh, this particular position. now it attains the uh, or this is the saddle point or the highest energy point is now more closer to the reactants. That means, there is an uh, you the position where you cross the highest energy barrier and fall into the product is now much more closer towards the reactant that means, it is very easier to form the products right or the reactants are uh, both the reactants are easily uh, coming in contact with one another to form the products. Whereas, when you go to the uh, repulsive part you will see that the you need to bring both the reactants at a far closer distance for them to actually undergo an interaction and then give rise to the product alright. So, having looked at uh, what, what do we mean by this attractive and repulsive uh, potential energy surfaces. Now, let us see a couple of trajectories on this uh, on this diagram. Let us say I am starting with the trajectory C here which is this uh, trajectory which you are seeing here. Uh, what I do is I am starting from a vibrationally excited state of the B C in it and it goes on and then it encounters the other reactant A, but then it now actually falls back into the reactant side it does not really end up in the product. However, if it had purely a translational uh, energy uh, in the the kinetic energy is purely translational then let us see what could be the profile. So, in that case uh, I would go along this green line 
I hope you all can see this here that I am going along this green line here and since it is purely translational it is going to go and hit the, uh, uh, the transition state or the saddle point and once it hits that it is almost now downhill. So, now it will go along the same path but now because the because the uh, system is not symmetric or it is a uh, or the transition point transition point of the saddle point is asymmetric actually what will happen is the product would go actually go and bounce on the surfaces of the potential energy surface so if you can think of a well if the uh, if the now the reactant come and cross the saddle point now they're going to go and hit the wall of this uh, potential energy surface and then they bounce back and then finally trickle down to the final product. As a result, the product one obtains is also in the excited state. Okay. So, I hope this gives you an idea of uh, an attractive potential energy surface. Now, let us go ahead and look at uh, a repulsive potential energy surface. In this case, uh, what you see is that again, I will just draw the same picture that you have the RBC and the RAB. Now, you see that the saddle point is actually at a much closer uh, internuclear distance of RAB. Okay. And here again one can do the uh, same exercise that is I can think of the kinetic energy for the reaction to be completely uh, translational. So, if that is the case the I would have a uh, scenario in which the path C would be followed that is I go along this line it is purely tr uh, translational it would go but it would now actually hit a higher energy surface wall and that would actually not lead me to the any of the products it would that would mean I would still be in the reactant space that is the right hand side. However, if I start with a higher energy or a vibra higher vibrationally excited state that is the green curve here or the green trace or the C, C star uh, trace then what I would see is that it would actually start bouncing off from the walls and as a result of this it can actually cross this uh, the uh, uh, corner which it has which it encounters. That is the reason why in the repulsive potential energy surfaces having the molecules in the vibrationally excited state would actually result in the formation of the product because then that would go, go through the saddle point and that would ultimately give rise to the formation of the products. And here again as you can imagine once you hit the saddle point you are just going sort of down the hill uh, or down the lane. As a result the products you would encounter are, uh, are in the ground state compared to the attractive potential energy surfaces where the products you encountered were in the uh, vibrationally excited state. So, these are sort of uh, the opposite sides of the spectrum one can think of like that. So, uh, this I hope this sort of gives you an idea of what are uh, repulsive and attractive potential energy surfaces and with this we shall stop this lecture. And in the next lecture, we shall look at a couple more examples of potential energy surfaces. Thank you.